Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Brian Donlevy, Robert Preston, and Broderick Crawford in Wake Island. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A producer who couldn't find dramatic material today would be like the man who couldn't see the forest for the trees. Some of the greatest dramas in human experience are being enacted all around us in the worldwide theater of war. And because tomorrow is Navy Day, we reenact for you tonight one of the simplest and strongest of all these dramas, one that's only a few months old and yet has already become immortal. It's called Wake Island, and it was written not in pen and ink by some pallid playwright, but in blood and fire by part of our Navy the United States Marines. Tonight you'll hear two of the same stars who are in the great Paramount picture, Brian Donlevy and Robert Preston, and with them, Broderick Crawford. Bear in mind that the story you hear is a reconstruction from the cold facts of reports and dispatches of what actually happened out there on that little island in the Pacific Ocean, where a handful of American leathernecks went down fighting for a cause that we must win. We won't use their real names tonight, but history will. One of the most important services that a national theater can render to our country is to make sure that the greatest possible number of people can hear dramas like Wake Island, to know the heroism of this nation's sons, and to remember it. That is one of the duration assignments that the makers of Lux Flakes have pledged this theater to carry out with the help and support of the national audience that is behind both the theater and the product. You have welcomed us of the Lux Radio Theater into your homes each Monday night, and we hope to enjoy and deserve that welcome for a long time to come, the same welcome you have given Lux Flakes for many years gone by. Now, the Lux Radio Theater has the honor to present a drama of American valor, Wake Island, starring Brian Dunleavy, as Major Jeffrey Caton, Robert Preston as Joe, and Broderick Crawford as Smackthy. Wake Island is a tiny dot in the midst of the Pacific, 4,254 air miles from San Francisco. Until 1941, it was known only as a stepping stone for Pan American Clippers. In June of that year, the United States Marines landed. By the end of October 1941, these troops, in typical Marine fashion, had made progress. Six five-inch naval guns had been emplaced and 12 mobile three-inch anti-aircraft. A squadron of 12 Grumman F4F3s, nicknamed Wildcats, were based at Wake. Constantly on the alert, patrolling the skies daily. Late in 1941, Headquarters Marine Corps assigned a new commanding officer to this tiny garrison. His name, Major Jeffrey Caton. His record, long and active. In Pearl Harbor, on a November morning, Major Caton makes his farewells. Compliments of your daughter, sir. Well, what's this? It's a cigarette case. <laughs> hey, this is something. Open it. There's something written on the inside. To Daddy from Cynthia, November 1941. Say, that's fine. Cost me an awful lot of money. I'll bet it did. Practically all my savings. Well, I guess I know what that means. Need some money, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> well, you are getting a little thin. Here, you better catch up on your ice cream sodas. Thanks, Daddy. I may be gone a long time. You better take some more. Thanks a lot. Well, what goes with thanks? A hug. Mm. <laughs> Daddy? Yes? Are you sure I can't come? Not this trip, darling. Mother used to go everywhere with you. She used to say you needed someone to look after you. Can't I 
Well, can't I sort of take her place and look after you like she did? You are taking her place, darling. But don't you worry about me, understand? I'll send for you later, just as soon as I can. All right. Say, where is this Wake Island anyway? What's it like? Oh, it's just a little strip of sand with a lot of water all around it. Another Marine said goodbye that morning. An aviator, Lieutenant Bruce Cameron, to his bride of three weeks. Oh, Bruce, goodbyes are awful, aren't they? Well, you let yourself in for a lot of them when you married a Marine. I know. Bruce, the handkerchief. What, again? Oh, I feel like this if you were going away overnight. Next time I leave, I'm going to bring a bucket. <laughs> oh, come on, darling, come on. <laughs> The third passenger on the clipper was a civilian, Shad McClotsky. Well, so long, baby. Here's where I leave you. You go now? Yeah, for now, pronto, right away. Thanks for showing me the town, baby. Goodbye. Aloha, Miliki. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Save it till I come back, will you? Hey, hold it! Hold that plane! <laughs> McCloskey. Hey, McCloskey, wake up. Mm. Oh, well, what? Good morning. Oh, morning. Don't suppose you got a bar on this thing, have you? <laughs> no, I can't even offer you a cold shower. Have we got to wake yet? No, we won't be in for some time. Would you like to slick up a little? I can lend you a razor. Oh, yeah. Now, look, General. Major. Major Caton. Look, General, you're a soldier and I'm a civilian. I've got a government contract with a mighty important job to do, but there's not a word in it about taking orders from brass hats. And that goes for suggestions about shaving, too. Call me when we get to Wake Island. That's all I want from you. <laughs> well, good enough. Oh, Cameron, have you got that map? Right here, Major. Fine. Let's have another look at our future home. Wake Island. A strip of beach in the heart of a mighty ocean. And on that strip of beach, two members of the 1st Defense Battalion, United States Marines. Two leathernecks, sunning themselves with their helmets over their eyes. Yeah, Joe, I can see them in my mind's eye. Big ones, little ones, all guzzling and grunting and putting on weight. Yeah, Joe, hundreds of them. Hundreds of which? Hogs, yeah. That's what the ex-wrestling champ of the Pacific Fleet has finally decided on. Out of this outfit, onto a hog ranch. Yeah. Last week it was turkeys you were going to raise. No, no, Turks is out. I just read a book. Turks has got 249 pages of diseases. No kid. Yeah, Turks is out. I decided on that. Hey, look, Joe, here comes the clipper. Yeah. Hey, ain't that pretty? Ain't that sweet, Joe? Hello there, you great big beautiful sweetheart, you. Just one more week, Joe, and I'll be aboard one of those things. Mr. Aloysius K. Randall, United States citizen, tourist deluxe. Nah, stop dreaming, Smexy. Monkeys like you don't rate no clippers. No? Well, I got the dough and I got the old man's say-so, so don't you worry, Bob. I'll be on it, all right. Hey, look, Smexy. Right here, I got ten bucks, and I'm going to bet you the whole thing that you right, that get... you get ten bucks. I got it all right. And right now, that ten bucks is saying that you don't leave this island, clipper or no clipper. Because why? Because you ship over, that's why. Uh... Yeah, you'll re-enlist. I will, me? Sure. You'll be a Marine till they wheel you out in a chair. Come on. Go on, you're slappy, Joe. Who is? You. Are you bamboo Now, you see, you left yourself wide open for an arm lock. I don't want to hear any of that wrestling talk. I just want to punch you right in the nose. Okay, Joe, there it is. Go ahead. All right. Hey, wait. Chow! Chow! Hey, Skipper, come hey, on, Skipper. Come on, Skipper, come on, Joe. Come on. All right, all right. Get in the line. Get in the line, you guys. Hey, how's about it, Cook? What's on the menu? Stew, brother, stew. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Here we go again. Good old stew. Come on, now. Heap it up, bub. Okay, Smacksy. Move on, will you? Oh, hello, Sparks. Hiya, Sparks. What are you hearing on the radio? Nah, I got some hot news for you guys. The new CO just got in on the clipper. Yeah? What's his name? Jeff Caton. Caton? Hey, wait a minute. That must be artillery, Caton. I knew him in China. That guy eats him up alive. Tough, huh? Tough. He had me in and out of the brig so much I wore it out. Hey, boys, the honeymoon's over. From now on, you're Marines. Hello, Jeff. How are you, Johnson? Glad to see you. Have a good trip? Fine, thank you. Jeff, our commanding officer. Commander Roberts, Major Caton. 
Reporting, sir. Major, I'm glad to have you share our exile with us. <laughs> Thank you, sir. This is Parkman, our doctor, Major Caton. How do you do? Play bridge, Major? Well, I play at it, sir. Certainly need new blood here. <laughs> this way, Major. You probably want to see your quarters. Well, thank you very much. Later this afternoon, I'll show you around the island. Um, Mr. McCluskey? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'm Hogan, Pete Hogan, your foreman. How are you? Well, I'm glad there's somebody here to meet me. Well, if I'd have thought of it, I'd have had some of our boys lined up for you with shovels. How you been making out? Oh, fair to Midland. We built quarters for the men and spotted some of the groundwork. We've sort of been waiting around for you. Why? Did you pour any concrete yet? Not yet. No, the excavating ain't finished. Well, let's finish it, mister. I've never been late with a contract yet, not even a government one, and I'm not going to start in on this bird sanctuary. Get going, Hogan. And there's the airfield over that way, Major. You can just about see the whole works from the tower here. So this is all there is to it? That's all. (laughs) Well, you could hardly call this place Gibraltar, could you, Commander? 21 feet at its highest elevation. And in any sort of a breeze, my friend, it all shakes. Well, sir, if the Navy has survived, I guess the Marines can. You know, Commander, my outfit's supposed to be a defense battalion. I don't see much to defend here. Matter of fact, not much to defend it with. (laughs) Only Marines. (laughs) Well, now that you've landed, Major, you'd better get the situation in hand. We will, sir. Starting straight away. I have an inspection in 10 minutes. Inspection, ten minutes. Snap it up, Smexy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I won't have to take his guff any longer, Joe. Seven more days and all you'll see are my tail feathers. Hey, I still got that ten bucks and it still says you don't leave. Do you really want to lose ten bucks? Put up a shut up. Okay, here, here's my ten. You can hold it. It's a bet. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Where's your dough? I got it all right. Don't worry. Let me see it. Well, it's very dangerous to leave money laying around here. The captain's holding it for me. Give me back that ten bucks. Come on, give me, give me. Oh, so you don't trust me, huh? Not ten bucks worth, I don't. Hey, Skipper, come here. Ah, girl, how's the girl today? Come on, Smacks, you straighten up that mess in there. Yeah, 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 right away. All right, take it easy, Skipper. Hey, who took that picture I had? Oh, there it is. Hello, beautiful. That's for you, honey. Hey. Hey, what's that thing? That ain't no thing. It's a picture of a dame. Let me see. Yeah, could be. You got it upside down. Turn it around. There. (laughs) I like it better the other way. Listen, brother, when you act disrespectful about her, you're acting disrespectful about the dame what's practically Mrs. Aloysius K. Randall, and I don't like it, see? Why, you thick-headed clunk. You mean to tell me you're thinking about getting married? Certainly, why not? You mean to tell me you found a dame that would marry you? The nuptials is being performed in Frisco New Year's morning. Besides, dumber looking clucks than me get married. Name one. Well, for... Why, you... Hey, lay off, you big slob. I'll murder you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Hey, you and who else, brother? This is just a sample. Oh, go ahead, slug. Let's see what you... I'll learn you. I'll knock your teeth out. Yeah, you and who else? Yeah, me and myself, see? I'll murder you. Chun, chun. Educate. Well, what's going on around here? Who's responsible for this? I am, Major. Who are these men, Sergeant? Roberts, Randall, and Doyle, sir. Oh, yes. Haven't we met before, Randall? Yes, sir. The China Station, sir. I suppose you've already discovered, Randall, that we have no brig here. Yes, sir. You know, I haven't got much faith in brigs anyway. No, sir. Putting a Marine in the brig is a waste of good manpower. That's right, sir. I'll see these men in the morning, Sergeant. In the meantime, I'll try and think of some way of diverting their surplus energy into a more useful and constructive channel. Yes, sir. Hey, I don't like the sound of that constructive channel stuff. Yeah, to me that sounds like digging holes or something. Yeah, what did I tell you, Joe? I said digging holes, didn't I? Yeah. Well, if this is a sample of Caton's constructive channels, give me the brig. Yeah, a couple of good Marines digging holes with a bunch of civilians. Hey, what are we digging here, anyway? Slit trench. Huh? Bomb shelter for air raids. What bombs in what air raids? Do I know? Hiya, boys. (laughs) How's it going? (laughs) Who's that mug? McCloskey. What's on your mind, pal? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to see what happens when Marines have to do a good day's work. (laughs) Hey, Joe, what are you supposed to give you for belting a civilian? With or without provocation? Both. Uh, Well, for busting a guy like that, I guess they give you a medal of honor. And there she blows. Come on, Smexy. Oh, what a... Hey, you guys, get back here. Get back in the trench and start digging. Hogan, 
Hey, hold it! Uh, yes, sir? What goes on around here? What's everybody running for? Orders, Mr. McCluskey. Whose orders for what? Air raid drill. Here. Here it is on this notice. Approach of enemy aircraft will be signaled by long blast of klaxon horn. All civilian workers will thereupon take cover. Where did you get that? Major Caton's office. Oh, Major Caton, eh? Well, I might as well shake that guy out of my hair right now. Get those men back to work! <laughs> my job to keep those men out there working in the machinery rolling. But if they're going to run in the bushes every time a brass hat toots a horn, I'm going to wind up behind the eight ball. Responsibility for the life of every man on this island is vested in us, Mr. McCloskey. In times like these, air raid drill is necessary. In times like these, it's necessary for you guys to let me get my job done. We're finished. just as anxious as you are for you to finish your job. Right, then quit stampeding my men with that auto horn and let me get to it. Everybody must participate in the air raid drill. There will be no exceptions. Oh, so it's a must, is it? It's a must. Well, General, the first man of mine that ducks in the bushes when that horn blows is going to get a two-by-four over his head. Mr. McCloskey, just a moment, please. I'm going to give you a bit of advice. Orders from the United States Navy Department will be obeyed. That's all, Mr. McCloskey. This was the life of Wake Island. When, on the afternoon of November 9th, a clipper ship arrived bearing a special Japanese envoy en route to the United States. His name, Saburo Kurusu. Gentlemen, it is my great privilege to propose a toast to that great executive of your great democracy whose lasting peace it is my country's greatest wish to preserve. Gentlemen, I give you President of the United States Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Hear, hear. Gentlemen, I give you His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Hirohito of Japan. Thank you. As you all know, I am on my way to Washington. With me, I carry a message from my emperor to President of your country. Gentlemen, it is a message of peace. I regret very much to say that between my people and your people, there have been some small misunderstanding. But it is therefore my emperor's desire that I show to your president the heart of a Japanese people. And I do solemnly swear that in that heart he will find no thought of a war, but rather a yearning for lasting peace. Therefore, gentlemen, I ask that you wish me Godspeed. This was the life of Wake Island. When on the peaceful Sunday morning of December 7th, 1941, Mr. Cordell Howe received in conference Japanese Ambassador Nomura and Saburo Kurusu, the envoy of peace. This morning, Envoy Kurosu stated that his emperor's message would, he was confident, solve the Pacific problem. So today, for the first time in many anxious months, a new note of optimism and hope marks the tempo of the Washington scene. Why don't it you quit listening to that stuff, Joe? Get something Hall romantic, will you? Romantic? Relation. For you? Yeah. Hey, put this picture in my bag, will you? It's Myrtle. You remember? Myrtle, honey, I'm on my way, baby. So you're really going to go, huh? Yeah, and oh, by the way, before I go, you owe me ten bucks. Oh, no, you haven't left yet. Well, I ain't dressed up for no Sunday morning inspection. How you like my civvies, Joe? You're just beautiful. One look at you in that outfit, and the old man will throw the book at you. Yeah, well, I got his permission. See, Mr. Smart Guy? Mr. Randall Caton says you are now a gentleman of leisure, and if you wish to travel in formal attire, he says it's okay by me. Mr. Aloysius K. Randall Esquire is back in circulation, and how do you like that? So long, Josie. Hey, what's your hurry? Clipper doesn't leave just this minute. When I'm going over to see Sparks, I want him to radio Myrtle to lay in a supply of orange blossoms. World, here I come. On your way, civilian. Here you are, Sparks. I got a message for you to send. Ah, oh, yes, Maxie. Let's have it. It's all written down here. See, there's just one thing. How do you spell nuptials? Nuptials? Mm -hmm. N-U-P-T-I. Hey, hold it a second. N-U-P-T-I. You? you don't have to eat my head off, Shut do up. you? What's the matter with you? Your wife having triplets or something? The Japs have just attacked Honolulu. They bombed Pearl Harbor. Holy smokes. <laughs> That's the 
with intermission, we'll hear Act Two of Wake Island, starring Brian Donlevy, Robert Preston, and Broderick Crawford. Meantime, in many homes today, you might find young wives writing letters like this one. Sorry, I haven't written before, but I just don't have a minute. Bob is working nights now, making airplane engines. And what with the kids at school, it seems as though I'm cooking or packing lunch boxes or washing dishes for some of us the whole time. But in spite of all those extra dishes to wash, the hands that are writing this letter are soft and smooth and lovely. You'd never guess to look at them now that not so long ago they were rough and red. What made the difference? A very simple thing. Changing from a strong dishwashing soap to gentle Lux Flakes. Careful tests have shown that making this one simple change gets rid of dishpan redness. The women who made these tests used no creams or lotions on their hands. They just changed to Lux Flakes. Now, isn't that an easy thing to do? And all it costs is less than a penny a day. That ugly dishpan look goes so quickly, too, when you change to Lux. In the tests, hands were noticeably lovelier in from two to seven days. And men do notice things like pretty hands, as smart wives know. So let Lux Flakes help you have the smooth, soft hands that every woman wants. Get the thrifty big box of Lux Flakes first thing tomorrow and use it for your dishes every day. Now the second act of Wake Island, starring Brian Donlevy as Major Jeffrey Caton, Robert Preston as Joe, and Broderick Crawford as Smexy. Hiding in the black night of December 6th, the Jap bared his fangs. On the morning of December 7th, he struck... A wounded nation struggled to its feet and cried for vengeance. On Wake Island, the handful of Marines leaped to battle stations. Four of the 12 planes took to the skies. Plane all set to go, Pavinsky? Yes, sir. Good shape? Yes, sir. But the airplanes, Lieutenant, they're like women. Sometimes they act good, sometimes bad. Sometimes you cannot tell. I'll take a chance on this one. You're the best mechanic I've ever met. Thank you. Russian, aren't you? Your lieutenant, Polish. Oh? What got you into the Marine Corps? I had a wife and two children. They were in Warsaw. Oh. Ready on number five. Good luck, sir. Thanks. My wife is at Pearl Harbor. in order, Major? I was just hearing the doctor's plan, sir. Emergency stations have been set up at all key positions. Very good. How about you, Patrick? Four planes in the air, sir. The other eight in reserve. There'll always be four aloft, is that right? That's right, sir. Uh, What have you been able to do about the civilians, Major? I've ordered them to take cover in the slit trenches wherever possible, sir. Good. I'd like to see those stations, Doctor. Hey, Kate! Yes? I want to see you. Oh, well, McCloskey. Listen, that air raid alarm's got my men running around like gophers again. How do you expect me to get my job done? Well, evidently you don't know. You got a piece of paper, you can have my resignation. You want to run my job? Well, go ahead and run it. I'm afraid that won't be practical at the moment, Mr. McCloskey. The Japs have just bombed Pearl Harbor. What? Say that again. The Japs have just bombed Pearl Harbor. The Pan American Clipper will take off as soon as Commander Roberts deems it advisable. There'll be a place on it for you. In the meantime, find yourself some shelter and stay out of the way. Major Kate. Yes? Enemy plane sighted, sir. Bearing southwest. 24 of them. 24. 24 against four. Well, happy birthday to us. Patrick? Yes, sir? Attack as you see fit. Yes, sir. Clipper. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. Come on, you. 
We didn't do so bad, you know. Yeah, wait till they come again, that's all. Come on, come on, you guys. Get that ammunition stacked up there. Underway, Sarge. When you finish, go on down to the next gun emplacement. Yeah, okay. Hi, right, guys. Wait, what you doing? Hey, Tommy. Don't look now, but I think we got a fifth columnist with us. Oh, cut it out, will you? He ain't no fifth columnist, Joe. That's Maxie Randall, remember? Oh, yeah, I thought I recognized him. Didn't he used to be a Marine? That's what I hear. Oh, lay off of me, will you? Gee, he looks pretty, don't he? Pipe that hat. Yeah. Don't get those clothes dirty, Smaxie. Oh, will you quit it? I was just passing the time the clipper leaves, and... Well, I was wondering how your new partner was making out, Joe. Oh, now, don't you worry about us, Smaxie. I'm doing fine, Smaxie. Ain't I, Joe? Sure. Yeah? Well, why don't you put that ammunition box on straight, then? Oh, <laughs> yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Excuse me, sir. Who's that over there? Oh, hello, Sarge. It's me, remember? Yeah, well, on your way, Randall. Go on, beat it. Hey, are you talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Go on, scram. Listen, you lay off of me before I take a poke at that thing you call a face. You're talking to a civilian, see? That's just it, buddy. Civilians belong in the slit trenches. Major Caton's orders. <laughs> Come on, Randall, over this way. All right, all right. Don't shove me. Don't shove me. <laughs> take good care of that civilian, Sarge. And don't let nothing happen to that elegant hat. <laughs> Major Kate. Yes, Doctor. I think you can see Commander Roberts now. Thank you. Uh, just a moment, Major. Yes? He's been hurt very badly. I wouldn't stay too long. All right. Go ahead. Commander Roberts, Major Caden, reporting, sir. Oh. Oh, come in, Caden. Come in. I... I've been waiting to hear about the attack. Yes, sir. Everything's all right, sir. Did they do much damage? I'm checking on it now, sir. Major, this is the room where we entertain those peace boys, isn't it? Yes, sir. Seems like a long time ago. Yes, sir. I... I take back that toast I gave to his imperial majesty. Major. Yes, sir. If you don't mind, you'd better leave. Of course. I'll drop in later, if I may. Major, I have that report, sir. Uh, Lewis, just a minute. We'll have to move Dr. Parkman and the wounded underground. Aye, sir. This has been a checkerboard bombing. That sort of stuff is no respecter of hospitals. Suppose you pick out a likely spot and detail a work party. Aye, sir. Well, Patrick, how'd you make out with your outfit? 23 wounded, 7 killed, sir. 7 planes out of commission. All the oil and gasoline on the field destroyed. Even the big tanks? That's right, sir. Not so good. How did the defense battalion make out, sir? Not bad, considering the strafing we got. You'll have to admit they did a pretty thorough job of it. With mathematical precision, square yard by square yard. When they attack again, I have a feeling they won't bomb the same square twice. So it's up to us to move our guns, equipment, and supplies into the areas already bombed. I suggest you follow the same procedure with your planes. Aye, aye, sir. Patrick, you and your boys have done a fine job. We're proud of you. Thank you, sir. Keep pitching. Aye, aye, sir. Captain Gordon of the Clipper, sir. Oh, yes. Come in, Captain. My name's Caton. How do you do, sir? Is the Clipper all right? Well, lots of near misses, but it wasn't damaged, sir. Well, that's a help. Are you ready to take off? With your permission, sir. Well, I don't see anything to hold you, unless our Japanese friends pay us another visit before you get away. All your passengers aboard? Well, they should be by now, sir. They were boarding when I left. Well, good luck. And happy landings. <laughs> Okay, civilian, on the clipper. Come on. Take it easy, Lug. Corporal Lug to you. Get on that plane. Hey, where's that dog of mine? Hey, Skipper. Here, Skip. Come on, girl. Never mind the dog. Get going. That's funny. I ain't seen her since the attack. Now, listen, dope. The clipper's waiting. You're holding up the parade. Look, look. Don't crowd me, will you? Get on that clipper and get on it fast. That's an order. Listen, Squirt, I'll get on. I'm good and ready. And don't give me no orders. I'm a civilian, see? Hey, Bill. Uh, Mac, come here. Take this here civilian and toss him on board the clipper. Oh, yeah? Try it. Go on, get going. Oh, boy. Come on, boys. Come and get it. Come and get it. Hey, take it easy. Hey, what do you think we're doing? Go on, Sergeant. What happened then? Well, as I understand it, sir, the accused here refused to get aboard the clipper, spoke disrespectful to Corporal Bennett, and assaulted first-class privates Riley and Richmond, causing them grievous bodily harm. I see. <laughs> well, Randall, what have you got to say for yourself? Well, sir, it's, uh, it's these clothes here, sir. What? 
Well, since I've been wearing this civilian outfit, I just don't seem to have no control. Control? Yeah, over my emotions. Randall, if my memory serves me correctly, weren't you before me on a similar charge back in Shanghai? Oh, no, sir. No? No, sir. That time it was the captain of that Italian gunboat. Remember the one with the long whiskers? Oh, yes. Yes, I remember now. You did a pretty good job on him. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, Major, if it's... Yes? All the same to you, I'd like to make the same request now I made then. You mean to extend your enlistment to ship over? Yes, sir. Randall, as man to man, I congratulate you on your decision. But as your commanding officer, I can tell you now that since the beginning of hostilities, you've never been out. You're a Marine for the duration. Yeah? If you'd gotten aboard the Clipper, they would have told you. Now, uh, Randall, I have a request to make of you. Yes, sir. Burn that dog catcher's outfit you're wearing and get back into uniform. Yes, sir. Sergeant, post him for duty. That's all. Left, hey, forward, hot. That's all, Corporal. Mr. Hogan is here, sir. Oh, yes. Hello, Hogan. Hello, Major. I've brought my report. Let me see. Not so good. No, sir. Any further instructions? No. Just tell the rest of your men to stay undercover. What's left of it? Yes, sir. Oh, by the way... Hogan, did your Mr. McCloskey get off on the clipper? As far as I know. So far as he knows, he's all wet. <laughs> so you didn't leave after all, McCloskey. Well, you thought I was going to run out on you, huh? Well, I... Well, I was. But I changed my mind. McCloskey, I'm glad you're staying. Why? Because I need a man like you. Good. Give me a gun. No. No, you can be more valuable than that. What do I do? Dig. Dig holes, lots of them. Revetments for our planes, shelter trenches. You'd better start by digging a big one, one big enough to hold all the casualties in our emergency hospital. Consider it done. Thank you, McCloskey. Good evening, Lieutenant Cameron. Good evening, sir. Hard at it, I see. Yes, sir. We're running out of spare parts for the plane, sir, so we're rolling our own. Well, I just thought I'd drop in and see how you were doing. Thank you. How's the rest of the world doing, sir? Not so good. Cameron. Yes, sir? Sit down, Cameron. I've got some bad news. Yeah, I've heard about it, sir. What? You mean about Commander Roberts, don't you? I've heard he's in pretty bad shape. It's not the commander, it's your wife. She was killed in the bombing at Pearl Harbor. Killed? I know there's nothing I can say that will comfort you. You know, Cameron, memories are funny things. They mold a man. From the time a man can remember, his mother, his sisters, his first sweetheart... His wife, even those women he might like to forget, even they give him memories that might help sometime. No, there's nothing I can say that will comfort you. You're like me now, a man with a memory. But we're not alone. In this war, in any part of the world, wherever they've dropped even a stick of bombs, they've made thousands like us, men without wives, without children, without a single thing they've ever loved or held dear. And for those men, there's a job to do. To fight. Fight with guns and bayonets and tanks and ships and planes. Fight to destroy destruction. We've got to destroy destruction, Bruce. That's our job. <laughs> Seven out of 12 planes, lost or disabled. The tiny island pockmarked by enemy bombs. And now the Jap returns to finish the job. This time, the danger is not from the sky. Enemy fleet approaching. Some destroyers, light cruisers. Troop ships, possible submarines. Bearing 130 true. Range 17000. About 10 miles. Yes, sir. Looks like they have no intention of stopping. That's up to us. Sir? I... I'm going to try and pull an old Chinese trick, Captain. Get all the men under cover. Conceal all guns and planes. 
When the fleet gets into range, they'll start shelling us. Do not return their fire. Enemy changing formation! Changing formation! They're preparing to attack us, sir. Well, that's what they came for. Range! Nine, zero, five, zero. They're closing in, sir. Shall we return their fire now, sir? No, not yet. Range, eight, zero, five, zero. Range, five, four, zero, zero. Signal from the chap, sir. What is it? Will, you... Surrender! We'll give them their answer in a few moments. Range, five, three, zero, zero. Range, five, two, zero, zero. Lewis, did you ever hear of Colonel William Prescott? No, sir. Well, he was the gentleman at the Battle of Bunker Hill who said, don't fire till you can see the whites of their eyes. You know, I've always remembered that. Well, I'll certainly remember it from now on, sir. Look at those ships, Joe, right up under our noses. I could drop a shell on one of those babies and wipe out a hundred chaps. Yeah, let's take a crack at them right now. What do you say, Smexy? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know the orders. We're supposed to hold our fire. Yeah, well, I don't know what's for. They get any closer, they'll blow this island to bits. What do you care? It ain't your island, is it? Hey, look out! Brother. That one was close. Yeah. Hey, you know, Joe, there's an awful lot of dope being wasted around here. Yeah, how do you mean? Look at all them shells dropping. Why, the price of one of them alone had set me and Myrtle up pretty on a little chicken ranch. Chickens? I thought you were all set for hogs. No, hogs is out. I decided that. Why? They stink. Hey. Hey, you all right, Smexy? Smexy? Yeah, 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 I'm all right. I'm okay. Just knock the wind out of me, that's all. Oh, why don't Caden let us fire? We could murder him. Yeah, anyway, like I was telling you, Joe, hogs is definitely out. They stink. <laughs> It was a real pacing we gave them, sir. They came right up under our guns. Yes. I imagine they got quite a surprise. Enemy 8-inch gun cruiser sighted. Bearing 2, 3, 0, true. What's the distance? About 15 miles, sir. 15 miles. Not so good. Oh, that's way beyond our range, sir. You can lay out there and smear us at will. Mm. Major Caton. Well, Lieutenant Cameron. I think I can get that cruiser, sir. What? Yes, sir. How do you propose to do it? If I strip my plane to the bone and limit the gas load, I can make a takeoff with a double load of bombs. Enough to do the job, sir. If you get two direct hits. I think I can, sir. Request granted, Lieutenant Cameron. Thank you, sir. And Bruce, good hunting. Through the gray sky, still heavy with the smoke of battle, a lone airplane roars toward its target. From the Jap guns, red tongues of flame flash upward. Battered and full of holes, the plane flies on and then swoops downward. Two direct hits. The Jap cruiser rocks and turns on its side. Bruce Cameron pilot returned. As he brought his ship to the field for a landing, his lifeblood stained the uniform he wore. Nice job, Bruce. Bruce, that was a... He... He cannot hear you, sir. He's dead. Yes. Pass the word, Probensky. Burial service after dark. Usual time. Grave ready, sir. Bring him over here. Have you got the prayer book, Lewis? No, sir. The only one left was in the barracks, sir. It was destroyed. 
I see. Bruce was a good Marine, sir. Couldn't you, well, just sort of say something for us? I'll try. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lower away. Mr. DeMille returns in a moment to present Brian Donlevy, Robert Preston, and Broderick Crawford in Act Three of Wake Island. In the meantime, we're sure you can recognize this. Yes, that's one of the anti-aircraft guns, the ACAC the Marines used at Wake Island. Did you ever stop to think how the ammunition for guns like these is made? Believe me, it's a big job, and a lot of materials are used in the making. One of these is glycerin. And one of the biggest sources of glycerin right now is your kitchen. Glycerin is made from waste kitchen fats, greases, and meat drippings. So save all of these in a clean, wide-top can and take them to your meat dealer as soon as you have a pound or more. He'll pay you for them. And those guns will deliver a special message from you to the Axis. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Now, here's something interesting, something I never knew till now, and perhaps many women may not know. The way you wash woolens can make a difference in their warmth. Here's the reason. The tiny wool fibers interlock, forming a little air pockets that hold the heat. If you rub wool in washing, these fibers mat together and shrink. Many of the tiny air spaces disappear, and your sweater or dress or blanket won't keep you as warm as it did before. That's one reason it's so important to avoid cake soap rubbing. To wash woolens the gentle Lux way. With Lux, you avoid other enemies of wool too. Hot water and harmful alkali. As experts will tell you, even a weak solution of alkali can make wool more apt to shrink. And strong alkali can actually dissolve the fabric. So stick to gentle Lux care. And your sweaters and blankets, dresses... The children's things, all your washable woolens will stay soft and unshrunken and warm much longer. The curtain rises now on the third act of Wake Island, starring Brian Donlevy as Major Jeffrey Caton, Robert Preston as Joe, and Broderick Crawford as Smexy. <laughs> on the 12th of December, 1941, the radio at Wake Island tapped out a message to Washington. Sixth enemy attack, 27 Jap bombers in division of bees overhead at 10.30. Day after day, the Japs smashed at the tiny stronghold. Wake Marines repel eighth attack. Day after day, the gallant Marines stood and took it. The 18th of December came. Wake Island still holds. The 19th, the 20th, the 21st. for me, Major? Oh, yes, uh, Captain Lewis, I did. Uh, have a cigarette? Oh, thank you, sir. You know, 
We've been getting it pretty steady for some time now. I've got a hunch we're in for a few hours breather. Your hunches are usually right, sir. I contacted a Navy patrol plane. They're going to take a chance and come in. I hope they make it. Yeah. Lewis, how'd you like to be home for Christmas? Christmas dinner in Honolulu with your missus and the youngsters. How does it sound to you? Well, you know how it sounds, sir. All right, get your gear together and stand by. Not this, Marine, sir. <laughs> I thought you'd say that. For two weeks now, Lewis, we've engaged the enemy daily. We've learned a lot about his tactics. That's information the Navy Department needs firsthand. Well, there's Patrick. Patrick's the only me? pilot that I've got left. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I'm staying. Captain Lewis, this is an order. Aye, aye, sir. Here's my official report. I'm not very good at this sort of thing, but I guess with what you can tell them, it'll give them a pretty good idea of what's going on here. Yes, sir. And uh, one more thing. Uh, Pete, will you do me a personal favor? This letter, it's for my daughter. I'll see that she gets it. Thanks. And just say I, uh, I won't be able to send for her. Not for a while, anyway. Well, so long, Pete. Enemy again, sir. Approaching in force. Transport screened by a strong escort. Well, looks like our holiday's over. Ordinance report, sir. 50 caliber ammunition's nearly exhausted. Get me the machine gun officer. Yes, sir. Machine gun officer. Machine gun officer. He's on, sir. Hello. Major Caton here. Replace the 50s with the 30 calibers. Follow plan D. Split the gun crews, spare men to take up positions in number one beachhead lines. If possible, relieve some of your men and see that they get a square meal. They'll be needing it soon. Repeat, please. Full message. Hey, you guys. How'd you like to wrap yourself around some real chow right now? Listen, what do you mean? I cook this stuff good, see? No, no hard feelings, Cookie. I only meant that if, if I was back in the States, out with a dame, sitting in some little cafe, you know what I'd order? A great big juicy steak about that wide and about that thick. With onions? Oh, yeah, with lots of onions. I'd settle just to be back in the States. I'd settle just to be with a dame. <laughs> with a dame. Yeah. Ah, oh, what are we talking about it for? Well, that's all we can do. Hey, Joe, come here. It's okay now. You're on my way. Come on, Smexy. What's the matter? Come on, we got a surprise for you. Yeah, yeah, but my chow's getting cold. Now, look, this is better than chow. Come on, will you? What could be better than chow? Lots of things. On this island? All right, all right. So maybe it came from heaven. What are you talking about? Now, never mind. Now, close your eyes. Oh, stop it, stop no, it. No, this is serious. Close your eyes. Okay, I'm closed. Now what? Now, if you had three wishes, what would you wish for? Uh, Myrtle. No, no, no. Something better than Myrtle. What could be better than Myrtle? Lots of things. Now, wish. Okay, one minute. Let me see. Still Myrtle. Yeah. <laughs> one track mind. All right, now open your eyes. Hey, what is it? <laughs> hey, it's Skipper. Hello, girl. Where have you been? See, I'm... Hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, she's got company. What are those things? Puppies, you dope. Four of them. Puppies? Skipper's puppies? Sure. Well, for Skipper, sk congratulations. Oh, fine. Congratulations. I didn't even know about it. Why don't somebody tell me these things? Uh-oh. Come on, Smexy. Okay, boys, here we go again. Battle station. Battle station. Major Caton. Yes? Our last plane is down, sir. Last one. That's Patrick. How about him? We saw the whole thing, sir. He went on fire, and he bailed out, and we... Bailed out? We'll contact the beachhead. Tell him to stand by to pick him up. It's no use, sir. The Japs machine gunned him as he came down. Machine gunned him? Why, the dirty... Get back to your post, Captain. Aye, sir. Ordinance reports. Directed on ammunition dump, sir. Another signal from the enemy, sir. They demand immediate surrender. Any answer, sir? Tell him to come and get us. Aye, aye, sir. They've got the Pan American in straddle, sir. I can't get through on the phone. Call all posts. To all posts. To all posts. Stand by to repel landing parties. Follow plan G. Fire independently. Stand by to repel landing parties. Follow plan G. Fire independently. Major Keaton? Yes? The enemy has landed on two points, sir, and gaining ground. I tried to get you on the phone, but couldn't. Thank you. Talker, call emergency radio. Yes, sir. 
emergency radio. Emergency radio. I can't seem to raise anyone, sir. Keep trying. Yes, sir. Emergency radio. Emergency radio. Hiya, Major. Oh, come in, McCloskey. Well, how's everything with you? Well, I figured I've done everything I could. Now I'd like that gun. You know, McCloskey, I've been thinking along those same lines myself. Suppose you and I go out and find one. Together. Right. I'll leave a message for radio first. Any luck, Talker? Did you get them? The lines are dead, sir. All right, drop it. Talker, I've got a message written here. It's for Washington. Will you try and get through to Sparks with it? I'll do the best I can, sir. Thank you. And good luck, fella. They're backing up, sir. They're backing up again. Jeff's are heading back to the beachhead, sir. Probably form a new line and be at us again in a couple of minutes. Let them come. We'll hand them a little more of the same. Pass the word to cease firing. Cease firing! Cease firing! Cease firing! Well, we'll get a breather anyway. Keep that ammunition coming as fast as you can. Aye, sir. Yes, Maxie, how you doing? I'm okay. I got ten of them that last trip. Yeah, nice work, fella. Boy, I'm tired. That's all right. So are the Japs. Yeah. Hey, what are you thinking about, Smexy? Oh, a lot of things. Home in San Francisco. Hey, Joe. Yeah? Joe, how many blondes do you suppose there was that we didn't get around to? Oh, must be an awful lot of them. I bet at least two dozen. Two dozen, huh? Boy, that's an awful lot of blondes. You know, I sort of feel sorry for them, don't you? Oh, I don't know. Only about half of them are missing anything. Oh, cut it out, will you? <laughs> okay, Smexy, no ribbon, huh? We save it for the Japs. Through Sparks with that message, sir. Good boy. Did he send it yet? He's repairing his apparatus. He says he'll have it fixed in about ten minutes. Good. Hiya, Major. Oh. Got any more of those hand grenades left? Help yourself, McCloskey. Right there in the box. Thanks. You know, this is a pretty good trench you fellas dug. <laughs> Came in handy, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, have a cigarette? Thanks. Well, how much longer do you think we can last, Major? Oh, long enough, I guess. Say, uh, I was watching you toss some of those grenades before. You've got a pretty good arm there. Thanks. From the way you throw, I'd almost think you had played football. That's it? Notre Dame 28? Yeah. I'm VMI 28. Hiya, Caton. <laughs> I am a class game. Here they come, Major! Fire independently! Let's go! Fire independently! Give it to him, boys! Let him have it! Let's see a couple of those long forwards, McCloskey! Get under this one, Jack! Nice work, McCloskey! Come on, get it, Jack! Step up and take it! Come on, Smexy! Yo! Ten for one, Smexy! Ten for every one of us! Ten for one! Come on, Jack! Yo! From Wake Island on that day, one more message came through to Washington. Washington, D.C., the enemy has landed. The issue is still in doubt. The enemy has landed. The issue is still in doubt. These Marines fought a great fight. They wrote history. But this is not the end. There are other Leathernecks, other fighting Americans, 130 million of them, whose blood and sweat and fury will exact a just and terrible vengeance. falls on Act Three of the Lux Radio Theater's presentation of Wake Island. While we await the return of our stars for their curtain calls, we have a message for the women of our audience. Nearly everybody is working harder these days, and many of you are not only running homes, but helping in war jobs. You have extra work, extra walking, and that means added strain on precious stockings. 
Just in my daily housework, I walked seven or eight miles. Dancing just one evening at the soldier's canteen averages more than four miles for me. Yes, today's jobs mean plenty of strain on delicate stocking threads. Whether you're wearing nylon, silk, or the new rayons, it's wise to give stockings Lux Care after every wearing. Over 90% of all makers of stockings, nylon, silk, rayon, cotton, and wool, recommend Lux Flakes. These gentle flakes save the elastic quality of stockings so they don't break easily into runs. So they fit you in a more flattering way, too. Be wise. Lux all stockings after each wearing. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. We needn't speak of the fine performances given by our stars and the entire cast tonight, because like the inspired performances of the Marines at Wake Island, they spoke for themselves. And here are Brian Dunleavy, Robert Preston, and Roderick Crawford returning to the footlights. Thank you, C.B. It was an honor for me to have a part in this Navy Day celebration here. It was just 20 years ago that the observance began, so that makes tomorrow our first wartime Navy Day. October 27th is a big day in Navy history, Brian. The Navy was founded by the Continental Congress on October 27th, 1775. And tomorrow is also the birthday of Theodore Roosevelt, who was largely responsible for the beginnings of modern United States naval policy. Well, let's not forget the birthday the Marine Corps has coming, C.B. Two weeks from tomorrow, the Marine Corps will be 167 years old. Well, that makes both the Navy and the Marines older than the Declaration of Independence. Yes, and they've always been pretty independent too, Brad, as our enemies will discover before this war is over. <laughs> By the way, what's your play next Monday, C.B.? Everybody will remember the picture when I give you the title. It's Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer's great screenplay, A Woman's Face. And our stars are Ida Lupino, Brian Ahern, and Conrad Veidt. A Woman's Face is the story of a beautiful woman who turns to a career of crime when an accident mars her beauty. Ida Lupino plays the part of the woman, and Brian Ahern, the man, who helps her find love again in this drama of unusual power. Well, with that cast, you're sure to have some good acting, C.B. It's time now to say goodbye for a while to another of the stars who brought us many happy hours in the Lux Radio Theater. After playing a Marine in Wake Island, I, I suppose he wanted to be entirely impartial because day after tomorrow, Robert Preston reports as a private to the United States Army. Well, good luck, Bob. We're going to miss you. Thanks, bud. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. And there'll be another chapter to the story of Wake Island. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ida Lupino, Brian Ahern, and Conrad Veidt in A Woman's Face. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Brian Donlevy's current picture is the Paramount production, The Glass Key. Robert Preston has just finished making the Paramount picture, Night Plane from Chungking. Broderick Crawford appears through the courtesy of Universal Studio and has just finished the picture, Sin Town. Heard in tonight's play were Fred Mackay, Paul Langton, Tyler McVeigh, Gail Gordon, Griff Barnett, Hal Gerard, Howard McNear, Mary Lou Harrington, Edwin Max, Lillian Bond, Jeff Corey, Pinto Kalvig, Wally Mayer, Charles Seal, Warren Ash, Leo Cleary, Janet Russell, Eddie Marr, and Jack Mather. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear Brian Ahern, Ida Lupino, and Conrad Veidt in A Woman's Face. Want to feel like a million? Try Vims, the new vitamin mineral tablets. If you're vitamin starved, Vims will help you build up resistance to colds and safeguard your energy. Vims match the six vitamin formula doctors endorse 
And they meet U.S. government standards, too. So get that VIMS feeling. V.I. for vitamins, double M.S. for minerals. VIMS. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.